Transportation sponsors a Safe Routes to School grant program. There's approximately $10 million available in this grant cycle for the entire state. This money is federal safety money that's passed down to the Florida legislature, like they do with all the states. It's a, it's a derivative of your gas tax, the federal gas tax you pay. And they take applications for projects, usually three or four projects out of the entire state get awarded out of 67 counties. Well, there, we've had questions asking the city when we could put sidewalks in the Beverly Shores area. And it's a funding issue. It's about a $500,000 project to do what we're trying to do right now. And that includes design and it includes construction administration and inspection and all the materials and labor. Well, the, the first step is getting awarded the grant. Then we go to the design phase. Then we have a public meeting where we present the design. Once the public has had a chance to make comments on it, then the Florida Department of Transportation approves the, the designs. We have to wait till the funding is let by the state of Florida, which probably won't be till July 1st of next year. And then once the funding's let, then we'll be able to let the bid and we'll get a contractor and it'll take about two months to build it. The, the, the other aspect of this is there's a um, bicycle and pedestrian safety education component that Beverly Shores Elementary will participate in where they walk with all the kids from and to school one day. And then they have a bicycle safety program where they bring in a trailer with about a 50 to 100 bicycles and they teach kids how to ride safely, how to navigate crosswalks, how to ride down the street, and every kid gets a free bike helmet. So it's a good education component as well. First of all, I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight. My name is Neil Gaines. I'm Deputy Director of the City of Leesburg Public Works Department. I run the Field Operations Division which is streets and highways, traffic signals, signs, water distribution, um, storm water, and sanitary sewer collection. So I have a big part of responsibility of what happens in the city. I want to thank Faith Community Church for hosting the meeting tonight. They've been very cordial in helping us in the past with having public meetings, and, and it's a great place to have them. So if you're not friends of the church, at least if you get a chance, if you ever see anybody from the church, thank them for hosting us. I really quickly want to introduce city staff that's here. So I'm going to ask my different staff members to say their name and what they do. I'll start with Steve. Steve Davis with the Electric Department. Brad Chase, Electric Department. John. Street 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 Street. So we came here tonight to give you a brief overview of the project and it, we're in a grant process and part of being able to be awarded a grant to do this construction, it's about a $500,000 public works project is our grant score depends on the public participating in the project. So that's one of the reasons we had the meeting tonight was to try to get the people that live in the neighborhood to come out and see what's going on and to do a survey if they have not done a survey online or if you want to, we have some surveys you can fill out manually. If you don't have children in school, we also have some other forms you can fill out with your name, address, telephone number and it, it helps our grant score. There is $10 million in federal highway gas tax money, which is appropriated as safety transportation money, and that's awarded to the Florida State Legislature. The legislature, through the Florida Department of Transportation, participates in a nationwide program called Safe Routes to School. The program is a program that helps communities to build sidewalks, 
to put in crosswalks, to put in flashing pedestrian signals, signage, build sidewalks, whatever it takes to have children safely go from home to school and return to home. So part of that process is there are 67 counties in Florida that are eligible to apply for this grant. We get $10 million in the state of Florida. There'll probably be about 75 applications turned in towards the 10 million. You can see 500,000 of 10 millions, a chunk. So they usually only award five to seven projects a year, a year. And we don't always get the funding every year. Sometimes they skip a year depending on federal revenue. But so we decided to move forward this year with the grant application and to try to get the sidewalks built to make Beverly Shores a safer walking community. It's not just for kids though, it adds to the walkability of your neighborhoods. If you wanna walk up to a store or you wanna to walk to church or whatever, you don't have to walk in the street. So it's a good component, it helps raise property values. And overall, it's a, it's a good thing to do for the community. Um, we laid out this initial route selecting the best path for the schools, the best side of the street to put the sidewalks on where we didn't have to move utilities and we didn't have to do as much driveway reconstruction. The project has to be built to ADA standards, which is the Americans with Disabilities Act. The cross slope of the sidewalks and the grades all have to be and meet certain criteria for people that are in wheelchairs, blind people, people that, that can walk but are disabled. So we have to meet all the ADA requirements. So that's one of the reasons why we picked the routes that we picked. I'd urge all of you to fill out one of the surveys or either fill out the contact information because it will help boost our grant score. The grant's due on the 10th, so that we wanted to wait till the last minute to try to have the meeting because a lot of times when we announce public meetings, something will happen and then months and months and months will go by and the public will lose interest. I don't know if any of you read the door hangers, but I think I, I got about 17 responses out of doing it through the school, sending these home with the students for their parents to fill out and return. So we really appreciate you coming tonight and offering your support or criticism if you have any. So at this time, I'll take questions from anybody or anything you want to know. I'll start and work my way this way. No, it's no, nowhere near a done deal. If we don't get the grant, it won't happen probably for years. We don't have enough funding. Well, the same with the road. Uh, Falling apart, might be getting better. Well, I can, roads here, the trees grow over. I, I can tell you that we're getting ready to do a pavement assessment study of all of the roads that are paved that the city of Leesburg is owning or owns currently. And then we will grade the roads from failing to most improved and then we will score those roads and we're going to start appropriating resurfacing money every year for the roads as far as the water lines there's going to be a long-term plan for water main replacement as is for sewer main replacement it just it, it takes a lot of money and uh Well, it, will, it does create demand on our water and wastewater resources, but it does bring in more tax revenue. As more tax revenue comes in now, after the 2007 crash, revenue went way, way down, and it takes time to reappropriate money and put money into capital improvement projects that do these kind of things. You know, a few sidewalks would be nice along the side of the house. What about houses? The lots are so small now. It takes value in a house. Well, it's part of the. Another side of the You guys just did a house two years ago. What did we do? 
you guys put sidewalks on the other side over there by the post office. You guys did that area where we did stock subdivision yeah. last year. Yes, it didn't do anything for us. Well, we had for the value of the homes, keep the cars are still parked on the sidewalk. Well, we had hundreds of people request them, but we only had one person show up at the meeting. <laughs> But again, these are long range plans and we look at the number of students that walk and we try to make a safe route. Uh, yeah. I can count the ones going down my road. It's usually two parents take the other two. Okay. Well, and the rest of us, we'd rather ride on the road anyways than the sidewalk along over here because you can't ride out anyway. If you leave your name and number with Diane, I'll communicate with you about the roadway projects and about water sewer main replacements. Anything else? Any other questions? I'm, I'm gonna go this way, so. My name is Chris Murphy, I live on Grant. I've been there for 25 years. The, you have sidewalks on Lee, Griffin, and Glen Ridge. Those are the main thoroughfares into the schools. Most of the other roads are literally side streets. Um, I would, I don't understand the utility aspect and what's under the ground. I can tell you the side that you chose on Wren Avenue to say that it's safer. Um, there's hedges between every house on Wren Avenue. They're all about eight feet tall. So when you step in four feet and put your four foot sidewalk, my car is going to be 12 feet beyond that sidewalk before I can see past that hedge back and out of the driveway. That's not safe. Um, this neighborhood's been around a long time. I lived here as a child. I raised two children here. They managed to get back and forth to school without sidewalks. Um, and I saw in the grant, part of it was helmets and bicycle safety. How about you teach them how not to walk in the middle of the road? That's part of it. And, that's part of the education. You know, on Glen Ridge, that's common even with the sidewalk safety. I'd also echo the, uh, the maintenance. I mean, if you have stuff, you have to take care of stuff. And I'll tell you, this hedge right outside of this church, I trimmed it in August because it was too overgrown. We walk almost every night, walk our dog. This sidewalk was overgrown. The hedge, the vines, the grass around the, the school sign out there. And you can go out there now and look at it. We've got a street sweeper that comes through the neighborhood. There's six feet of sand sitting in this corner. I, or six inches of sand in this corner. I removed the last six inches out of there okay. because we got tired of slipping in it. Okay. If you have stuff, you have to take care of stuff. And there's enough of the Miami curves <laughs> through the neighborhood with grass growing out in the street that's not maintained. There's enough sidewalks with grass growing over them that hasn't been edged and not maintained. And you just want to take money to increase the property value. Well, first of all, we what, don't what do we that. Have, is it being maintained? We don't do the maintenance on sidewalks as far as edging and trimming. Right. Property owners are responsible from the edge of pavement. That's a code. And, that's, and there, let, there, that's a code enforcement issue, and I'll address that. That's nobody owns that. You guys own that. The, right. you know, all the bushes. Yeah. Say? And, and by the lake, that, yeah. is, that is an issue. We own, we own a piece of the Glenmere Bridge, but I right. believe all the property owners along actually do own it. I'll have to look it up, but if you'll give your contact information to Diana, I'll get in touch with you. Well, part of the code, part of the application process is to identify issues and we know code enforcement's an issue. So it, it, it's a two-sided slippery slope. I can have code enforcement go to every house here and cite people. The, the idea and the spirit is not to have the government come down on each and individual homeowner. But part of this grant process is we will go out and identify who's not maintaining their, their part of the right-of-way where the sidewalks are now or where they're not going to be. And that's part of this is to try to improve the neighborhood. So if people aren't trimming out to the edge of pavement, they have overgrown hedges. That's all part of the code enforcement component of building these to make a safer route to school. We had 45 
traffic citations issued between 441 as a boundary and Lee Street up to Griffin Road in three years. So that's a little over a citation a year in this entire area. I have been called so many times about people speeding through the neighborhoods. We've had people want to put speed humps on the streets. Lots of different things I like that. Well, and again, that's something, now you have my contact information. We need to hear what you want. That's part of this process. It's not what we want. I live here, you live here, but this is your neighborhood. And we respect that. But at the same time, we look at a way to make a safer route to school. But the component of taking better care of the neighborhood. If we need to involve code enforcement to an extreme, we can, but I don't want to do that. I'm hoping to get more and more people, property owners that rent. If we know about them, we can talk to the property owners first without having to get code involved and ask them to maintain their properties. But I don't have the size of the staff. My streets and highway department is three people. John's one of them. We have a sign tech and we have a a general laborer is basically what we have. We have a lot of street signs to take care of. We constantly fill potholes. We do all kinds of things like that. As far as the street sweeping, that irritates me if we have sand in the curb and it's not being picked up. So I, I do and will address that tomorrow and get it cleaned up. Yeah, okay. One thing, you know, as far as the code enforcement aspect, you know, this isn't a gated community, I understand. I, you know, we're all neighbors. I don't want code enforcement running through here. There's a lot of people that have lived here a long time. Uh, you know, maybe they're not physically able to do some of the maintenance that they were able to do in the past. And I understand that. There are a lot of renters. Uh, the folks that own those houses, I'm a little less uh, sympathetic to because that's a, a for-profit business. And there are codes and ordinances in effect that can address that because code right. enforcement, fire department, and building department can inspect private residences. You don't want your you don't want your community to slip and get worse. That's right. all part of this. Um, and you know, back to the enforcement, you could do things that wouldn't be as hard as a stance. The letters the other night, I probably a safe bet that got most of us here. The letters on the door. Uh, how about maybe spend a little bit of time with, with some of the, the ordinances and the responsibilities of a homeowner. I can do and, that. And I can have a code enforcement door. meeting here. And, and, and kind of let folks know. Well, here's, here's part of the problem. Everybody in the room thinks we have a way to communicate with you. That's why I try to collect email addresses. And it's kind of like an informal neighborhood association if you'd be but some people have to understand if they don't write the correct letters in their i got so many emails returned out of the out of the 17 i think only three actually worked so it's important that we get your phone number and we get your email address and where you live and then we can send stuff out and communicate with you more we put a lot of stuff on our city facebook page for public works and for the city and we're starting to use social media on our, on our city website as a, an addition to put more broadcast out. But I too would like to have neighborhood associations and start to get people more involved in their community. Give you an instance. We put new neighborhood signs up around the city. I don't know how long the one on Griffin Road lasted for Beverly Shores, but it got hit by a car, hit and run. We have no idea. That's a $2,700 sign. So. Well, enough room not to run over it with a car. It was out of the travel lane. But people... But a lot of people don't realize that we do things to try to improve neighborhoods and then somebody runs over it and just keeps going. You know, so now we, we haven't finished putting them out yet and we're already getting calls, when are we going to put yours back? But everybody else hasn't even gotten theirs yet. So... You know, it's those kind of things. The biggest thing that I think, and I don't know if you have an active neighborhood watch program here or anything like that in your particular area of Beverly Shores, but as citizens of Beverly Shores, y'all need to communicate with each other more too and keep a better eye. Part of the grant process, if we're awarded 
is there will be increased um, police protection as far as traffic enforcement. There's so many people speeding down Lee Street. I mean, it's constant. And, and you look at our poor solid waste guys that have to get out and empty trash cans. They fear for their life every day. My guy's working on water meters that are right up to the edge of pavement. They fear for their life every day. I mean, it's people were so distracted driving with cell phones and everything else that it's, it's become scary. But please give John your stuff and I'll get in touch with you. I need to, is anybody else over here? I wanna move on to the middle now. Who had a question? I'll start there, yes sir. Question. How many Can you say your name first of all? On okay. How many feet will be taken from Five foot sidewalks. How many? Five foot. Five feet is all? That's all we're doing. That's five foot from the pavement over? It's five foot wide wherever the sidewalk has to go. How much green is in between? I don't know until we see your utilities and stuff. But it's all going to be part of the, an actual design, as, as I'd stated. Right now it's a concept. We will come out and survey all the utilities, all the water meter boxes, everything. Check the slopes on the driveways, and we'll figure out the best place to put the sidewalk within the amount of right of way that we have. Anything else? There was another question. Yes, sir. Okay, I just want to be frank. Is this is grant money? Yes. From the state. From the federal government. Federal, okay, from the federal government. And it is to do what with? To build sidewalks. And that's it. That's it. And so we either take the money and build the sidewalks or we let the money go and go bomb. Well, we're trying to get right. awarded I mean, the and money. And that's what I'm saying. Out of 67 so counties. The money can't be used for the paper road or no. the water or do anything else. It's got to be used for sidewalks. So it's a pretty simple question. Do we want the money to build the sidewalks or don't we? So do we pursue that or don't we? Well, our, our intent is to pursue it okay. based on the number of calls we've gotten right. in the, in okay. the years. But I mean, what I'm trying to say is we can't do anything else with this money. It's not like you can go, get a grant to do this and then do something else with it. So if we get the money, if you get the grant, we get to improve the way kids get to school and we do put the sidewalks in. Now, I have a sidewalk in front of my house on Glen Ridge. Hey, we maintain it. We do it. I mean... The kids walk to school there every day. Now, if folks on the side streets, if they don't want it, I guess now is the time to say, hey, I don't want it. I don't want you to take that eight foot or whatever you're going to take. Five, well, five feet for the sidewalk, but yeah. there's a green space in between. We've got a, I bet that there's a good 10 foot there. But, yeah, what is the total? I'm sorry? You've got five feet for the sidewalk. How much green We have no idea until we survey. So well, there's offsets based. There's offsets based on speed limits, curbs. It's called design criteria. Again, I can't tell you until we survey it. So, I mean, maximum. I, I I can't tell you. Okay. I don't know. So it won't be more than ten. <laughs> it won't be more than ten. John, hang on for a second. Hang on for a second. John, John, how much right away do we have approximately on each side? Six or eight foot? It depends on the measurement from the center of the road, each each spot. So it varies. It could be 10 feet. In some spots, some spots, it could be eight well, feet. I mean, it, it, it all depends. Okay. So it's not a lot of room. What I'm saying is, I mean, I, that's the question. We don't really have another question. I'm okay. Just, I'm not going to be successful. Well, again, you can understand without having it surveyed, knowing where everything is, I can't tell you. If there's a utility pole in the way, any of that stuff. I can't tell you until we figure it all out. So right now, this is just to try to step one, so I, I think get awarded are, are the you, funding. Are you got, you're saying you're basically going to go try to get the money to put these sidewalks in. And then we'll come back if we get it, okay. and we'll present after we've surveyed it, after we've designed it. Sidewalk may be on the opposite side of the street, depending on, on right-of-way availability, Depending on stormwater, we don't want to affect the drainage in the community. There's a lot of factors that go into it. Right now, this is a concept. It's just a, it, this is nothing more than a grant for sure. <clears throat> right, that's all it's for. Yes, ma'am, you had a question. Yeah, I have the opposite argument of this gentleman over here. I think you should be 
both sides of the road through the whole neighborhood for aesthetic value for nothing for starters it's much nicer looking but for the safety i ha i live on the corner the north west corner of oak and gibson and my particular house i pick my grandsons up from beverly shores every day and i'll continue to do that with this map because for them to walk if you had the sidewalks on the north side of the street instead of the south side of the street they would cross griffin road and then no other roads to get to my house with the sidewalks you've got here they'll have to cross the street four times after they go across Griffin. Okay, will you leave your name with John so we can look at that particular street? Because one of the factors is, in doing the surveys, is trying to find out how many kids live on each street. Well, did you get a notice? We have some surveys in the box. You can fill out one, and then we want your contact information. Because if it does make more sense to do that, then we will do that. Like I said, right now, the state looks at it as a concept and we look at a, at a total number, we're probably not gonna get more than $500,000 in grant money. So we tried to show them what $500,000 would do. The other problem with kids walking through my part of the neighborhood is at both the corner of Gibson, Mizell, and Perkins, that particular corner, the cars fly around the corner on Mizell they can't see who, who's on that road, that intersection, until they get around that corner. And they're flying. They don't stop. They just keep right on going. Is there a stop sign there? And on yeah. my corner, your men that have work at the lift station actually trim my entire fence because they said it's not safe to pull out of there because the cars come flying around the corner at Oak. Do you live Gibson. right on the corner? I'm on that corner with all the broken driveway. That's good. The sidewalk is going to look exactly the same, and I get one. I get one side of my property with sidewalk, and the other side without. Did we meet right after Hurricane Irma? Yeah, but nothing ever gets done on it. So the sidewalks are just going to break up the same way my driveway is. I thought we did meet. <laughs> leave John your leave John your contact information and talk about with him so he can get it from. I've done that several times. Well, but I'm I'm trying to get a grant, and I'm trying to do what the community wants. And if it makes more sense to do it your way, we'll do it that way. Okay. We'll have a design charrette meeting here. We'll bring in the engineer and we'll invite everybody to come back and, and we'll ask you to tell them when we have all the big maps with the surveys exactly what is the best route. Okay, and, and we'll design it that way. If it makes sense, we'll do that. We're not here to build something you don't want or need. We're trying to make it safer. So that's the whole idea behind it. That's a whole other issue besides the sidewalk thing. All right, well, I didn't do it. I haven't been there that long, so. I think the bottom line here is that the kids got the sidewalk to walk on, and they're out in the middle of the street. At least we can, like, say, hey, why don't you get on the sidewalk? And that's they a don't have a sidewalk. They got no place else to walk but the middle of the street. We see them walking down toward the harbor every day, and they're old kids, and walking down the middle of the street. It's a parent. It's a parent issue, also. Well, the parents aren't with them. I know, but it, it's called common sense right, teaching right, your kids. Right. But if they've got the sidewalk, they tend to walk on it. Yeah, they do. Yep. Not, not to be politically correct, but I'm sure this is. If we put sidewalks through the neighborhood, how much more people will walk through the neighborhood who don't live in the neighborhood? We have a huge problem with that now. Yeah, it'd be hard to get more. <laughs> How many of you have ever written the chief an email asking for something at the police department? You know what? That goes a long way. You email the chief of police, is Chief Hicks, he gets stuff done. If you have a homeless issue, you have people speeding through your neighborhoods, we don't know it. I mean, we see it all the time, but we see it everywhere. But the loudest noise gets the most attention. To some extent, but honestly, you know, I've lived in this neighborhood for 25 years, and as far as making noise down there, as a Leesburg resident, 
I don't, I didn't really think anybody down on Main Street realized that we were still here. That we do. Be because uh, it seems the downtown partnership and Venetian Gardens get all the attention. Uh, I've watched stock subdivision go down the tubes, this neighborhood go down the tubes, well, we're, Indian Oaks go down the tubes. We're trying to help this neighborhood now, and this has been a priority. I got here and- I don't think it's the sidewalks. Right? Well, it, it, it's a start, <laughs> hey. It's, hey, it's a start. Let me, let me explain something to you. I got here in, in September of 2017. I was immediately greeted by Hurricane Irma. So I spent the first six months of my job cleaning up Leesburg. And I think we did, John, we did a remarkable job of getting the debris out of your neighborhoods. Matter of fact, on Sunday, if you saw... If you saw a big, huge fire... You guys are one of the... Biggest benefits living in this If you saw a big, huge, we had a big, huge fire on Sunday at the landfill where we were burning. That's the, we're at the tail end of getting rid of all the Hurricane Irma debris now. But we recognized once the hurricane went through and tree roots uprooted sidewalks and cracked driveways and broke utility lines, we really started a microscope on Beverly Shores. If you remember. I think near Mosswood, where we had the two big trees by the lift station that broke your water main and you didn't have water for three or four days, that was the catalyst that started, let's go look at Beverly Shores. So we started planning this two years ago and we waited on grant money to come available because it is the first step. Once we do this, we're going to encourage you guys to do a neighborhood association or a crime watch, start communicating with each other and start asking for resources when you need them. That's the biggest thing is most people never ask. Um, the, the few that do usually get what they ask for. So, but it's all about communication. Well, I don't wanna, you know, the karma thing, I don't wanna, but I'll tell you what this neighborhood is. I was out of town during karma, and we lost a bunch of our limbs off of a bunch of those trees. My two neighbors, but they're younger than me, <laughs> they had that stuff cut up, and Leesburg had it picked up before I got back in town. Now, that's our neighborhood, and that's the neighborhood I live in, that's the neighborhood you live in, and, you know, and we got, we got some problems. I think you guys just did well on me. Terry, my wife could set me out on the curb and they pick me up. Okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's all that matters. But my whole our whole department really tries. Our wastewater, our water, solid waste, streets and highways. Everybody wants to make you guys happy. Well, I think you're gonna get Yes, I got a bucket truck while I work for the utilities. I went back there and trimmed them over my shit. Well, you guys come out and did pick them up. Now, I really appreciate that because it saved me property damage. And, you know, but the sidewalks, I don't think it's going to do anything for my value of my property because the front yard's so short already. I understand. Now I got two cars, the one sitting over the sidewalk. That's why I don't care for it. when I need water lines coming down my road, not a We're looking at right. We're looking at added, added size to water mains to increase fire protection, additional hydrants, lots of stuff. I'll let Steve tell you a little bit about what we're doing with power. We are undergrounding power in the city. It, it all comes down to dollars and how far we can spread it. But after Irma, y'all took on a, a very aggressive undergrounding in the last... After Irma, we actually started looking at Dixie. That's what we're working on right now, is the Dixie project. Once it's done, then we've got other projects that we're, we're talking about, and modifying the system, making it a little bit stronger. And a lot of the reason why Dixie, it's an evacuation route, there's a hospital, we have our water treatment facilities, our wastewater treatment facilities, all the stuff to keep the city running. It can only run on generators for so long. 
but you know, we try to restore services as fast as we can. And I'm surprised that that was the electric company. They started that back after Charlie, Francis, and Gene. Because I renovated my house, upgraded the electrical service, and, and they required me to go underground. So, I mean, and that's a good thing. Yes, sir, Brad. Does the project only move forward with your grant? Right now, yes. It's a big part of the funding, so. Now, we do have gas tax money that we get every year, but a lot of it goes to small segments of sidewalk and, and improvements and, and different things like that that we have to do to keep the city moving. But, you know, we, we could have picked other subdivisions to do this in, but we felt Beverly Shores really needed it because if you look at that map, there are no sidewalks in a big area there. And it, and it, it does help. And that doesn't, I'm not. Well, could use in another neighborhood. It doesn't, another, well, we can't skip to another neighborhood with it. We have to stay in the limits of the, but that doesn't mean that we have to put it on your side. We, well, but there's, you already got a few sidewalks running down, right. but there's no cross ones. But this also includes painted crosswalks where the sidewalk comes to an intersection. It'll be striped for the crosswalk. It, it, it'll make the walk a lot safer. But like I said, it's a concept right now. So we actually do the survey. We do the utility locates, everything that has to be done. We won't know exactly until it's done. Any other questions? Please make sure before you leave that you put your name, address, phone number, and email address, if you would, on the sign-in sheets. It'll help us to communicate in the future if we do get the grant when we have the design charrettes. And I can only urge, there's very few people that are involved, but if you want to start a crime watch program or some kind of a neighborhood association, anything we can do to help the neighborhood communicate better, it's just like working with the school. Did you know Beverly Shores doesn't have a PTA? That's it's sad. My wife. Uh, it does. Well, that's not what I. That, it does. It that's works. not what I was told. Okay, it does, and we've been trying to build it. Okay. Um, we are trying to get parent participation, and yes. You're so, in your first year as principal, right? Absolutely. Yes. All right. This was the previous principal that told me that. Right. That there was not an active PTO PTA organization. My wife's a 30-year retired school teacher. We just couldn't believe that there was that lack of interest among parents. It's very difficult, I will tell you. We only have about three, at this point, three parents involved, and I've got about 10 teachers. Um, so we're trying to build it. Uh, we constantly get the information out to the parents. I have two parent uh, school um, liaisons that work in the community. And so that's their biggest goal is to get parents to come in. Let me ask a question. Does everybody mind if I give her your email addresses if you gave them to us? So if she wants to send out something to you to try to get your neighborhood involved, you mind doing that? I mean, whatever it takes to help you get more parents involved. I appreciate that. And, and even non-parents, I mean, that absolutely. live in we, the neighborhood. Absolutely. School volunteers, everything. I mean, it, it, it's hard. I mean, we have one resource officer, I believe, that Trevani Kitchen is your SRO? Yes, he does an amazing job. He sure does. He's also a mentor to uh, numerous students on our campus um, on his own time. So he does an amazing job. And again, I mean, just the effort it took you guys, I think you sent like 650 surveys home that I brought to the school. And I, I know you got to be disappointed when we get 17 or 18 back. And, uh, you know, all we want to do is try to help the school. And we want and to help the community. Absolutely, and that's one of the things um, coming to uh, Beverly Shores this year. It, one of our goals is to increase uh, parent engagement um, because we know that in order to turn the school around, which we're working really hard to do, it's going to take um, you know a, a commitment with the families and also with the community. So we appreciate all the support that we have been getting. And if there's anything we can do as, as public works, please don't as get my card. I've emailed you. Don't hesitate to contact me. We want to help the school. We want to help the community. I think the Wawa is going to make a, 
I don't know what kind of impact it's going to have on your community. After, I'm in a church. I have to watch what I say. But there's going to be so much more walking traffic, so much more traffic driving through the neighborhoods. Because the Wawa is going to be a magnet. Tell John, where, tell John where you're talking about, and we'll address it tomorrow. I think it does now, but it's I also encourage, um, you know, in your neighborhood, if you're seeing students that are walking in the middle of the road, coming to school, and you see something unsafe, please call us and let us know because, um, you know, those are the things that we do address. And we do call parents and we try to work with them so that, you know, we have some conversations on talking to our students because we assume that they know what to do, but a lot of them are in kindergarten you know, in first grade. And so they don't always make, you know, the it's best decisions. That they all um, you know, it, it, it is, but I also understand the situation because we've got parents that, you know, both parents are working and, you know, they, they walk to a babysitter's house. And again, a lot of people don't realize kindergartners are walking home in your neighborhood and, that, and they don't have a sidewalk and they shouldn't be walking in the road. And that's part of this. Would you mind telling everybody your name so if they do want to call you, they can call you? Cindy Pastitas. Um, you can call the school and they'll be, you know, they'll put you through to me. And again, like I said, if you have any um, questions or concerns about the students, you know, walking to school or from, you know, uh, from school, I and just, absolutely let us know. Um, because I have two APs and we do get in the car and we do make trips. Stacy has been a great help with this, by the way. I want to make sure I thank you, and if you would thank her. Okay. And again, this is, right now, it's, it's a, we're taking baby steps right now, so. But if we do get $500,000 and we can build sidewalks in your community, we want to build them the best, smartest way. If they cause conflicts with visual abilities to go in and out of your house, if they're causing problems with anything, stormwater, access, that's what the design charrette's all about. If we have to move utilities, I mean, it can be anything. We don't want to spend a lot of mo money moving infrastructure. That's one of the main things we want to look at. So any other questions? We really, really appreciate you guys coming. And, uh, and, and we, I would imagine in six months, now this isn't going to happen this year. It won't happen until after July 1st of 2021. It has to go through a funding cycle. So we, once, we, once we get the money, if we get it, then we'll put out to bid an engineering firm to do the design. Once that's awarded, then we'll start the process. We'll immediately get with the school. We'll make sure that we're meeting their needs first as far as safety. And then we'll go from there of how we address the layout. Thank all of you again for coming. I really, re any other city issues you want to ask about or any that I can, while I'm here, if you have a problem, I'm talking about in Beverly Shores. Um, I think it gave the, um the uh, members of the community an opportunity to speak their opinions. Um, I certainly hope that this grant goes through as far as the school is concerned because we do want our students to be safe coming to school and, and getting home. That's one of our top priorities. I think, you know, training the students how to use the sidewalks is very important um, and um, obviously advantageous, you know, to get the students to school and, and home safely. Also, you know, bike safety. We want to make sure that we are, um, the students are riding their bikes safe with the helmets. Um, we do this at school, you know, we help them um, with bike safety. Our um, officer works with, um, works with students through our PE program, so we could definitely work um, together as a community and make sure that our students are walking safely, using the sidewalk safe, and, um, you know, bike safety.